Alrighty guys, it is Monday morning for me. It might be Wednesday or Thursday for you guys by the time you see this, but it's time to start another project on the channel here. And this week we're gonna be working on the ugly truck once again, the Suburban. We just finished up the 0411 swap. I've been driving it around and enjoying it. And so now it's time to get ugly truck back inside. And there's two things that I'm gonna do. The second thing, which will probably happen a little bit later this episode is pretty easy. I'm simply gonna be swapping out the lower front valance for this, which is a 2001, 2002, 2500 H HD lower valance and the reason why I'm swapping is because it has this nice molded in center section that's going to allow a lot of air to flow into the bottom of the intercooler where right now this one is just completely blocked off uh, so far the only spot air can get into the intercooler is from those little vents right there that I opened up and then obviously the intercooler takes up that whole space as well but uh, because the tubes for the intercooler exit or enter at the lowest spot right there that air scoop will definitely improve air and the cooling ability of the intercooler at that low level. Uh, but like I said, that'll happen a little bit later this upload. The first thing that I'm gonna take care of is in the suspension. But before I tell you what I'm gonna be doing, let me tell you why I'm gonna be changing it and where this truck is headed in April. So, uh, it's at, I believe it's called Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park. I'm gonna go to the Pro Touring Truck Shootout. Now, Pro Touring, that means something that'll handle, something that can actually turn. I really didn't build Ugly Truck for any specific sort of discipline. It's not necessarily a drag truck only. It's not necessarily a road course truck. It's not necessarily, you know, well, it's definitely not meant for high speed racing, but it's just a fun all around driver. And right now the suspension has been lowered, but I really haven't done anything that'll necessarily improve how it's going to handle and stick to the ground in the turns. Uh, it's a 2-4 drop right now, and I kind of like the stance. I may end up dropping it a little bit further at some point, but that's not what we're going to do today. So 2-4 uh, drop has got spindles up front from Belltech and shackles and hangers out back once again from Belltech. Uh, the brakes, the brakes are kind of already upgraded. Those are, it's a power stop kit for a 2005 newer Silverado. So the rotors are like an inch bigger than the stock. 2000 rotors has got a little bit bigger caliper so the thing stops pretty good i definitely need to put new tires on all the way around but today we're going to be doing sway bars so i did a little bit of looking around and i found on facebook marketplace a brand new but never used belltech solid front sway bar and from what i understand that's quite a bit stiffer than the sway bar that's out front already and because these trucks actually don't have a sway bar out back i'm going to be installing a hellwig sway bar now I thought about doing the junkyard approach there. You know, you can source a rear sway bar from a Suburban or a Tahoe of a similar year. And it's a pretty simple upgrade, but I just, with how busy I've been lately, it's hard to find time to go to the junkyard and find all the little brackets and miscellaneous pieces that you need to make it work. And I've ran a Hellwig sway bar on my last uh, turbo truck, the 2010 white Silverado. I had a Hellwig sway bar out back on that one. Really enjoyed it. So I just figured let's kind of upgrade everything all at once. Bigger, or it's not necessarily bigger, but a stiffer sway bar out front and then add a sway bar out back. And when you combine that with a couple other odds and ends that we're going to do, hopefully it'll really tighten up the handling of the truck. So one more problem that we're going to try to address with a bit of a temporary measure is the wheel hop that the truck has. Now wheel hop is basically when you're accelerating, you're kind of on that verge of braking traction and the tires just kind of barely grabbing onto the pavement. And more or less the tire just kind of skips up and down and the whole truck kind of shakes and it's really bad for driveline parts because that shocks everything. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to try to take care of that today. Now really the best permanent solution for something like that on a leaf sprung vehicle is a traction device like Caltrack bars, but I'm not going to be installing Caltracks for a couple different reasons mainly because I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with leaf springs forever. I'm probably going to convert to a four link style suspension at some point with coilovers out back. Uh, so I don't want to spend the money on them there. And also when, since I have the two, four drop with the hangers up front, you got to modify the uh, Caltrax just a little bit to make them work. So I don't want to do it now. And also I've heard that the Caltrax aren't the best for a road course style of setup where you're going to be turning left and right. Uh, so that's why we're not going to do them. But instead, I'm going to try a temporary measure that only costs like 15 or 20 bucks. I'm going to be installing some leaf spring clamps. And more or less what that does, just like the picture shows here, it clamps the front of the leaf spring pack together. Now there's two main leaves and then there's a pretty thick overload spring. And the overload spring is pretty stiff by itself. And that'll help prevent some of that axle wrap or where the springs kind of want to twist. So basically by clamping the main spring pack, to the overload spring pack, 
uh, in theory, it'll stop some of that wheel hop. So I, I grabbed one set, so I'll put one on the front end of each spring pack where the overload kind of comes in contact with the main springs. I might have to grab a second set, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not sure if you guys have clamped your springs. Let me know what you've tried. I'm really, I've never done it before in a vehicle. I've usually just installed traction bars. So I'm kind of curious to see what's gonna happen. But anyway, um, I guess it's just time to get to work. So enough talking for today.
The sway bar is back in and the whole front end of the truck is put back together. Now, as far as the sway bar goes, that's pretty much a direct bolt-in installation. The only real challenge I had is I had bolted the sway bar up to the frame side first, and that made it a little bit more difficult getting the top nut on the end link attached just because of the kind of angle of the twist on the end of the sway bar. So all I did was just loosen the, or completely remove the sway bar from the frame side, let it kind of hang down a little bit, and that turned the end of the sway bar just enough that it made the bushings kind of go in a little bit easier and I was able to get the nut started. And then all I had to do was just push the sway bar back up onto the frame, so no big deal. It's a basically direct bolt and installation. It looks great and it'll definitely improve the handling over the stock sway bar. Um, as far as the front lower balance goes, I've got it on, but I'm, I don't know, I'm not gonna say I'm happy, but I'm not unhappy either. I'm really 50-50 on how it looks. I think my biggest complaint is I had to trim a little bit more than I was originally hoping I would, so I lose some of that nice kind of molded in shape that the, the valance had, and now it's kind of a dead giveaway that there's an intercooler in there. You know, before it had a little bit of a sleeper vibe because after I had painted the intercooler, you really couldn't see it at all, and now, I mean, yeah, you do see it a little bit down below, and I guess the trade-off is definitely a lot better cooling because the inlet and the outlet of the intercooler are on the bottom here, and so the air basically has to flow kind of across, but some of it does flow up to the core and then back down. Uh, but anyway, probably the greatest flow is going to be right across here. So the more air we can push across the core in that area, the lower our inlet air temps will be. Uh, but like I said, I'm just I'm not crazy about the looks. I trimmed it as tight as I could, so there's only about a you know quarter of an inch of a gap in here. Um, but like I said, we'll see how it looks outside once the truck is on the ground because it's also pretty low to the ground. So, you know, the angle most people will be seeing it is probably something like this. So, I don't know, I, there's a small, small chance I might end up putting the other valance back on, but I don't know. We'll see. So now, let's get that rear sway bar on, which means I need to lower the front of the truck and get the back up in the air.
All right, installation of the rear sway bar is complete and it's very straightforward, very simple to do, only basic hand tools kind of a job. Uh, you don't even have to drill a single hole in the frame, so I'm really happy with how quickly that it went on. Uh, just a couple of things to keep in mind if you're going to be installing this or really any sway bar for that matter. Uh, number one, you want to keep the end links kind of at a 90 degree angle to the bar. That way the force is transferred in as straight of a direction as possible. You know, the bar will be most effective that way. Also, there's three holes on the end of the sway bar. Some are adjustable like this, some are not. Um, the farther you have the pivot or the end link away from the center line of the bar, the looser it's going to be. And the closer you have the pivot or the end link to the center of the bar, the stiffer it's going to be. I just put it in the middle and I guess we'll see how it goes. We can make some adjustments if needed. Be. But to be perfectly honest, I'm not even sure what way to adjust it if you've got oversteer or understeer, whether to make it stiffer or looser. But I guess we'll just have to experiment with that in the future. Also, I've got the spring clamps on. I have no idea how that's going to work out. I've never used them before. Uh, hopefully it'll cure some of the wheel hop. If so, it'll be a nice and expensive fix, like 20 bucks for the set. If not, uh, I don't know what we'll do. We'll figure that out when the time comes. Uh, just another note on rear sway bars, the one thing I do like about this style of Hellwig bar, the stock Tahoe bars and Suburban bars, they go towards the back of the truck. That makes for a really simple installation. Like the Belltech bar you can get, I believe that and a few others actually points towards the front of the truck. Effectively, I believe it'll work the same exact way, but those bars are a little bit more difficult to install because you've got to put a couple of holes in the bottom of the frame. And if you remember on the driver's side of these trucks, you've got the fuel tank right up next to the frame. So that will make it a little bit more difficult. But anyway, that's a wrap for this video. I'd love to get the truck out and drive it and kind of see how it's going to handle now with the new sway bars front and rear. But unfortunately, with the weather that we've been having lately, it's probably not the time to go out and do any sort of performance driving. But that's all right. We'll get to that at a later date. Next video, I'll probably have the Suburban back in the shop. You guys know what to do. Like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you on the next upload. Getting dizzy and motion sick.